chapter two will be batch management. And the aim of this is to cover off the following subjects within batch management. We're gonna define the batch management, list each batch status, explain batch management within the overall logistics process, perform a batch trace, and define documentary batches. Before we go forwards with this, there are some key terms we'll just refresh ourselves with. ASN, which is our advanced shipping notification, provides detailed information about a pending delivery from a supplier. Batch represents homogenous units with unique specifications. Batch determination, used to find batches that meet defined specifications for all types of good movements from the warehouse. Batch management. Batch management is defined as the tagging of a manufactured or procured material within a unique identification code. And batch master record, a data record that stores the information required to manage a batch. We'll be covering all these off. Documentary batch, batches that could be used to ensure that partial stocks of a material are traceable without using traditional batches. In the case of manufacturing sites, this would be material stored in silos. Inbound delivery will be touching on as well. This is a document containing all the data, material, quantity, and batch required for triggering and monitoring the complete inbound delivery process. There are some key changes to batch management. We've touched on documentary batches, which are the storage of siloed materials. We've got batch determination, which enables batches with specific characteristics to be identified for use in goods movements. We've got batch management. We'll be active throughout the logistics process for more efficient tracking and tracing. That batch management will be used for finished goods semi-finished goods, primary packaging, ingredients, and any packaging materials with regulatory information. The following slide shows the batch management overview. And you, as you can see, batch management is integrated in all applications. It supports the management and processing of batches in all of the company's business processes. Inbound processing from a supplier, which is the procurement. When receiving material from external suppliers, the supplier batch number from the ASN will be utilized. If no supplier batch is available, internally generated batch numbers assignment will be used. Production. Intelligent batches are created at the end of each production run to identify batches produced on a certain day during a specific production run. Sales and distribution, the outbound processing. Sales order documents will be produced for each outbound delivery, which will hold all the batch information from the production and the procurement. What are the materials that are going to be batch managed? So all finished goods with the code within SAP of ZFIN and semi-finished goods, ZSFG, are to be batch managed. Raw material and packaging material are to be batch managed depending on usage. All ingredients stored in the bulk silo tank follow a standard batch management rules until offloaded into a bulk storage container. Primary packaging, print or ink that is in direct contact with the food, and secondary packaging that contains any ingredients list, regulatory information statements, or legal claims. There are two types of batch status, unrestricted and restricted. 
within the SAP system, we will still see the batch. And if it's unrestricted, it can be used. If it's restricted, although the batch is visible, it cannot be used. Batch record creation and number assignment. This slide explains the inbound processing from supplier. So a purchase order is created, there's no batch. The ASN is received from the supplier. This is where it will have a batch and all the relevant information, expiry date, quantity, product. We'll then get an inbound delivery into the sites. A goods receipt is performed and upon goods receipt, batch master record is created within PepsiCo. Just as a note there, if no batch number is provided from the supplier, a batch number will be internally assigned at the point of goods receipt and inbound. Within the production execution, a process order is created, the material is produced, and the raw materials that created that material are consumed. It is at this point that the intelligent batch number is assigned for the produced goods. We'll come to that in the future slides. And there is a manual processing. The requirement for a new batch master record, which will create a batch master record within the background for new products. We touched on this on the previous slide. After the production of materials, a batch master record is created for the associated materials, semi-finished goods or finished goods for both IM and EWM locations. The batch number is generated using an external number range following the below format. It'll be a 10 digit code in which the first digit will be the single last digit for the current year. The following three digits will be the Julian date. The following four digits will be the plant in which the material was produced. And the last two digits will be the production line on which it was produced. And this will be our intelligent batch number. The following slides are linked to the batch master record. If you can see on this slide, it's the basic data, which will contain the batch master record, the batch number, the status indicator, date, and date of manufacture. Also within the batch master record is the classification. And this classifies the batches and store specific batch data, weight or other technical details. Within the batch master record is also the material data, remaining shelf life. And also the material master would contain batch management and shelf life data, maximum storage, period, minimum remaining shelf life, and total shelf life. All this will be maintained within the batch master record. Next we'll come on to is, is the batch trace. Performing a batch trace allows PepsiCo to understand which batches are used to produce material in a top-down analysis, as well as what batches are shipped to a customer in a bottom-up analysis. There were two approaches, top-down, bottom-up. If we look firstly at the top-down analysis, we can see the sales orders of the product that went to the customer. This will be linked to the process orders of that particular product when it was manufactured with the intelligent batch. It will then be linked to the process orders of the materials that were used and consumed to make that process order. The final of the top-down analysis will link back to the vendor batch management. This is the procurement of the raw materials from the vendor and their batches. If we look at the bottom-up analysis, it's showing the same information, but as a bottom-up scenario. Firstly, it'll start off with the batch created by the vendor and the inbound processing. You'll then the materials that are used to make the process order that are consumed. This will be the finished goods or semi-finished goods created from that process order. 
and lastly where the materials went to which sales order and that is the batch trace touched on briefly on documentary batch this will be an overview for it documentary batches can be used to ensure that partial stocks of a material are traceable without it being necessary to manage this stock of a material using traditional batches within pepsico we will receive all bulk and silo raw materials using documentary batches documentary batches will be managed within im only not ewm This is a process flow for documentary batches. So a tanker of corn, for example, will arrive at site. There'll be a physical inspection, there'll be a quality inspection, and then the posts will be goods received. Once these four steps have been completed, it is only at this point when the material will be unloaded. We're just gonna go through some knowledge check questions. What is batch management? True or false, all materials will be batch managed. What are the different batch statuses? What is an intelligent batch? And what is a documentary batch? So we look at question one, what is batch management? As we touched on a batch, a partial quantity of a material that is managed separately for other partial quantities of the same material in stock. True or false, all materials will be batch managed. We know this to be false. Materials not in contact with product will not necessarily be batch managed. We looked at the two different types of batch statuses. There's restricted and unrestricted. We looked at intelligent batch, the 10 digit code made on the production of finished goods or semi-finished goods. And this intelligent batch refers to the PepsiCo format year, Julian date, plant number, line number. And lastly, we looked, touched on documentary batches. These are silos, batches that could be used to ensure that partial stocks of a material are traceable without the use of traditional batches. Now we've covered these steps off, it's given you a good insight into batch management. We're now gonna look at how the system, the SAP system will trace that batch management. Now we're gonna look at how we trace view the batch usages. This is covered off in quick reference guide number 16. And we'll be going into the top down and bottom up to display the batch usage. We'll be operating within the SAP IM system and we'll be going into the TCO display batch usages, MB56. So if you firstly click on MB56, and locate tile display batch usages. And the following screen will appear. We'll enter the material number, we'll enter the plant, and we'll enter the batch number. We'll click on the top down analysis. And in the bottom right hand corner, click on start analysis. If you click on the expand subtree arrows down, we can now see the full top down analysis. We can see the finished goods that was created with its intelligent batch number and quantity. And within that finished goods created, we can see the process order number that was used to make it. Within that process order, we can see all the raw material and batch numbers that were consumed to make that process order. We can also see any sub process orders, which in this case would be a whip, and in turn, the raw materials and batch numbers that were used to make that sub process order. This is the top down analysis of a finished goods material with the plant and the batch number. Staying within the same screen, we can simply click on the bottom up tab. This will then keep all the information, but now we're viewing the bottom up batch process. And within this, you can see the finished goods and the intelligent batch created and the material number and all 
the plant, the STOs, which is a plant to plant movement, a stock transfer order, and all the sales orders go into a customer from that original intelligent batch produced finished goods. You see the sales order numbers and all the relevant document numbers linked to the STOs. We have now viewed all actions for batch usages used to make the finished goods from ingredients to customer dispatch for the top down. And we've viewed all the batch movements from customer order to ingredients used to create it, the bottom up. This ends this exercise.